Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I am here today in HK's Grey Room in Ashburn, Virginia, taking a look at some cool historical H&K firearms. And specifically today, we're taking a look at the HK-33 family. And this, if we go by HK's uh, designation sort of system, is the, uh, the military rifle for the 5.56 cartridge. Now we also have an HK-53 here, using their designation system, that would be a submachine gun in the 5.56 cartridge, which is... well, we'll touch on that in a minute. Now, HK had begun looking at the 5.56 the by 45 millimeter uh, intermediate cartridge as early as, like, 1960. Uh, although it took a couple years uh, before they actually got this design started. The HK-33 itself originated in 1963. Took a number of years to get the design... all the kinks worked out of the design, and that's something I think a lot of people don't fully appreciate, is just how long it does take to really make an effective and reliable firearm. So at its heart, this really is a G3 rifle scaled down to 5.56. But it's not so simple to do that, as simply taking the dimensions and scaling them down by a certain percentage. It takes a lot of trial and experimentation to get all of the parts to actually work together. Things like extractors don't just scale down perfectly. Same thing goes for the roller locking system. Getting the timing and the angles just right in the locking piece uh, for a roller delayed gun like this, that, that takes some engineering work, and it doesn't happen overnight. So uh, one of the first trials of the system was actually a US trial. Uh, Harrington and Richardson licensed, uh, or was involved in, the production of a small number of these for US trials in 1965. Those were actually designated the T223. Um, and Someday we'll get our hands on one of those rifles and do a specific video on it. But for now, just the HK-33, uh, which did finally go on the international market, or the commercial market for HK, in 1968. Now this would never prove to be quite as successful of a rifle as the G3 had been, or as the MP5 was. Uh, although all three are basically the same... well, literally the same mechanism, uh, just sized for different cartridges. Uh, over the course of its development, it did go through a little bit of iteration. Uh, the, the very first original guns were tweaked just slightly to become a second pattern, um, which is what we see primarily today. And then they did a couple different styles and barrel lengths. Of course, being an HK rifle, this has uh, some element of modularity to it. So what we have here is the HK-33, the standard rifle, which interestingly has a 390 millimeter barrel. We translate that into uh, American units. That's 15 and th basically 15 and a third inches, which I will point out is actually below the US NFA limit for a short-barreled rifle. So when they made these in a semi-auto version, the HK-93, uh, they actually had to make the barrels longer to make them legally compliant. But uh, that, of course, wasn't an issue for the military. So we've got a, a 15.35 inch barrel on the standard rifle, and then there is a G30... Uh, HK 33K quartz, the short version, which has the barrel cut down to 12.7 inches, that's 320 millimeters, and that's coupled with a collapsing buttstock, just like you see on both the G3 and the MP5. They did also eventually come out with a factory version that has the full length barrel but the collapsing buttstock. That's the sort of thing you can do modularly with HK stuff very easily. And then we have the HK 53. So. Let's talk about this briefly. Um, it is named, formally designated as a submachine gun, uh, because of its very compact size. This has a 211 millimeter barrel, that's 8.3 inches. It's got the collapsing buttstock. And probably the best way to think about this would be like the, the NATO Western version of the AK-74U, the Krinkov, um, as it's colloquially called. Uh, and that's why this was termed a submachine gun. Not because of its cartridge, because this is still in standard 5.56. It's called a submachine gun because it's so incredibly tiny and portable and handy. And this actually kind of ended up being one of the more popular versions of the gun. These were adopted by um, some more substantial sorts of units. Not not full military forces, but uh, the, more, the British Royal Marines adopted these. Uh, the British SAS adopted and used the HK-53. Its portability... Well, where it really shines is 
it's a very short barrel length that's able to operate reliably with the, the roller delayed system in a way that the M16 really kind of had problems with. Um, the M16's sort of uh, gas impingement system has trouble at very short barrel lengths. And we see that even today with uh, it, that being one of the main reasons for uh, the piston driven AR type rifles. So back in the 70s, when these were available, if you wanted a very short barreled 5.56, the HK-53 was one of your very best options. Now, uh, let's take a minute and just pull this apart, and I'll show you the internals. Although, for those of you who are familiar with the MP5 or the uh, G3, you'll already know exactly what they're going to look like. We'll start with the standard HK-33. Uh, you can see the markings there. Pretty basic. HK-33. Made in Germany by HK. Um, also, at this time, uh, HK had an office in Arlington, Virginia, uh, and the caliber on this is listed as 223, interestingly, instead of 556. The selector markings on here are numeric, so uh, semi, safe, semi, and full auto. You could also get these with burst fire mechanisms for the triggers. Uh, basically, all of HK's different uh, trigger configurations uh, were available on these guys. This is a safe, semi, full example. And the reason that it says 25 on that selector is because the standard basic magazine was actually 25 rounds. Now they did also produce a 30 round magazine, so we've got a 30 back here and a 25 up front, and they also made a 40 round magazine, which I don't have an example of here to show you, but it's the same thing, but a little bit longer. The rest of the controls here are identical to all the, the other HK rifles you might expect. Uh, we have a, a diopter style of rear sight, settings for 1, 2, 3, and 400 meters. The charging handle is in the top left side of uh, above the barrel. Again, pretty standard. Front side is standard. The full size HK-33 was set up to be able to use rifle grenades. The shorter versions were not. Uh, if there is one major complaint to be had about this rifle, it would be its weight. Um, the standard HK-33, despite only having uh, just under, well, a 15.4 inch barrel, uh, weighs right at about 4 kilos, so that's just under 9 pounds. It's pretty heavy for a 5.56 caliber rifle. The HK-33 fixes a little bit of that. This brings the weight down to about 8 pounds, about 3.65 kilos. Um, still heavy for its barrel length, though. Everything else about the 33K is identical to the standard 33, with the exception of the collapsing buttstock. And then, of course, we have the 53. So this one has a little more modern trigger group on it with the pictographic settings. And this one also has a, a, a three round burst trigger in it. And this one is an HK53C. The front end is a bit different from the standard rifles. The handguard has to be shorter because of the shorter barrel. And because of the shorter barrel, it has a much more substantial uh, flash hider to it, a longer open ended four pronged flash hider to at least attempt to dispel the, uh, the giant flare of light that comes out of an 8 inch 223 barrel. Taking this apart is very standard HK. We'll pop the pin here for the buttstock assembly. There we go. So the stock assembly comes off. We can then pop the second pin for the fire control group. That comes off. And then there's a third pin at the front for the handguard, which also comes off. We can then pop and pop out the recoil spring and the bolt carrier assembly, bolt head and bolt carrier. So there's the whole system field stripped. This is of course the very short HK53 series uh, gun, but with one little exception that I'll show you in just a moment, the, all of the others are exactly the same mechanically. That one thing that is very slightly different is actually the bolt carrier assembly, um, where on the 53, because it is so short, there isn't enough space for the regular bolt carrier and the charging handle, so they cut this tube down. On the standard HK33 and 33K, uh, this extension runs a little bit farther forward, uh, where it is hit by the charging handle. So other than that, 
absolutely no difference between these guns. So the HK-33 was not adopted by the German army for the prime reason that it was never really under consideration by the German army. The German army, when this came out, was still planning on having the G-11. They were pretty happy with their G-3s, and the next thing they were going to replace them with was that caseless wonder weapon, the, G the G-11. Well, by the time that fell apart in 1990, this was no longer really a modern weapon. This had become obsolescent uh, in the same way that the G-3 had. So the German military kind of bypassed this guy and went straight from the G3 to the G36 in 5.56, uh, skipping the roller-delayed version entirely. Uh, this also didn't make any substantial sales, you know, didn't get adopted by any really large, like, mainstream uh, Western NATO sort of powers. However, they did make a lot of smaller sales to smaller countries. Um, a lot of the countries that uh, didn't have maybe the infrastructure for an army the size of what you might expect in Western Europe, but wanted to get into a very reliable, very durable, uh, well-made rifle in 5.56. So some of the early customers were uh, Thailand and Malaysia and Brazil, and that would kind of set the stage for the HK-33's military customer base for the rest of its service life. Um, these were, went into production in 68. They remained in production until about 2000. So a pretty, actually a, a longer production life than you might have expected. They were licensed out to a number of countries for production as well. And while this is the least successful commercially of the, the major HK platforms, uh, it is by no means a commercial failure. So they are pretty cool little guns. Um, I'd like to give a big thanks to HK for giving me access to uh, grab all of these different versions to show you, and hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.